good to be together. I was going to say it's good to be in the house of the Lord, but honestly, this is just a building. Because He's come and made His home in our hearts. Amen? So what we get to do is we get to step into the fullness of the presence of God this morning. He's invited us into His very new presence. And so we want to come this morning and bless Him for His goodness. Amen? If you have a reason to praise, please stand up and we're going to worship Him.
are here to exalt you and lift you high, to bless your name today, to lift up your name over our lives, to lift up your name and exalt you over our city, to lift up your name and exalt you over our nation. Be the Lord of all today as we declare your praises, as we lift up Lord, we lift you up, we lift you up. 
We want you to come into alignment with your life. We want to come under the authority of the King in every area of our lives. God, we want to partner with your spirit. We want to submit to your spirit. We want to agree with your truth in this moment, today, and every day after. But right now, God, in this moment, in your presence, in your goodness, in your power, through your spirit, Holy Spirit, we come into agreement. We partner with your heart, your heart that's for us, your heart that loves us recklessly, ridiculously, your hand that covers us, your hand that's always upon us, your hand of provision, your hand of mercy, your hand of protection. We come to you now with our lives as an offering to you. This is the time of our worship where we want to show God our extravagant love and our extravagant gratitude. <laughs> We worship him in our tithes and offerings, partnering with his truth about provision, about how he views our finances, how he views everything that we do in for the kingdom or in the kingdom as a seed that we're sowing seeds. That when you give according to the word of God, he gives back to you with interest. Uh, yeah. It looks like this. Press down, shaking together, and running over. It's this increase of the kingdom that God wants to pour out into our life because he's a good, good father. Amen? Amen. Because he's a good, good daddy, he wants to pour out. And if you're a parent, you know what it feels like inside of your heart. You want to lavish, even when your kids are behaving not so great. You still have this place in your heart where you want to lavish them with gifts. You want to pour out every good thing upon them. And the word says, how much more does your heavenly father, if your earthly father knows how to give good gifts, how much more does your heavenly father want to give you more than the Holy Spirit? So let's worship him right now in our offering. Let's give him a shout of praise and just thank God today. Yo! Yeah. 
great exchange that God wants to invite us into an upgrade. We all have the walls. We all have the walls. And He wants to completely break down so His Spirit can overtake all the places of our lives that we really want Him to be in. Right? So I just want to invite you to assume the position of surrender. Into 
us the kingdom. He can put into us the fullness of the Father and the adoption through the Holy Spirit that God has imparted to us. So we're going to worship the Lord in, in communion right now. We have communion up front or we have it in the back, whatever is easiest for you and in whatever way. The only, the only warning that Scripture ever gives in this is that if you know that you're living in willful sin, that this can become a judge, a cup of judgment, that if you have unrepented, if there's a place in your life where you're just like, you know what, God, now I'll let you have this, but you don't get that over there. That's a, that's a dangerous place to be. Because that means that there's still a place in your life that is, is not surrendered to God and you don't want to drink the cup and take the bread and say, God, I want the benefits, but I'm not willing to make the sacrifice. I'm not willing to be obedient. I'm not willing to step into that. So I just encourage us in this time. We're just going to worship for a little while and let, let the Lord lead us in this time of communion with Him. To commune with Him basically means to hang out. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're invited to this table. Let's worship in communion right now.
few channels one and two. Check. We need you, Lord. We do need you, God. Woo! And thankfully, <laughs> He's made Himself available. He has good things for us. And that good thing that he gave us, that Jesus said was the greater gift, is the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk today about, partly about the activity of heaven around us. And I have a, a friend in the house with us today, and I'm going to invite Georgia to come up. Um, Georgia Hawkins is has been connected to us. I don't even know how God brought you. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it is <laughs> so. Georgia has been a dear friend to us and, and, and a confirming voice from heaven for us. As Georgia has spent the better part of her life learning how to listen to the voice of the Lord and how to hear from heaven. Right. Part of part of the gifts of the Spirit is being able to do that, being able to hear prophetic voice or words of knowledge or deeper understanding and wisdom that goes beyond human knowledge, goes beyond human wisdom to the supernatural. How many of you can agree we serve a supernatural God? That means that we are designed to experience supernatural things. And, and I have, I've actually probably only spent the last 10 years actually getting to experience, well, a greater increase in experiencing the supernatural things of God. And, and that includes all sorts of incredible healings and miracles and signs that God does, dreams and visions. And, and God, I, in fact, at the very core of my belief system is this encounter I had with God at 14 years old as a supernatural encounter. And you can ask me about that another time. But I'm going to invite Georgia. I believe that she's here today because um, she has a, a word from the Lord. Um, Holy Ghost. And then you check it out with Holy Spirit. If what I'm sensing is from the Lord. You know what? I don't have a clue what I'm going to say next. Do you get it? Yeah. Yes. Serving God and doing things by the leading of the Holy Ghost is risky business. Right. And sometimes you just got to take a risk. Right. To step into that paranormal, we should all be paranormal. Right. The supernatural simply exceeds the natural. Right. And we should be supernaturally natural. Right. Yeah. First nature. Right. Right? right? right. And as you've been singing these wonderful songs, great, they reminded me of what the Lord said to me in Colorado several years ago in a meeting. He said, My people are always telling me what they think of me. <coughs> they sing it to me, they tell me how great I am. They talk about my majesty. I love it. But I wish my people would ask me what I think of them. Amen. Amen. Sometimes that can be so scary. Right. Because if I say to Christy, who knows me better than anybody in the room, Christy, now honey, if you see anything in my life, now I just want you to just tell me. I just give you permission to tell me. That is so risky because in the natural, right. oh God help us, but if the shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll want to say, oh, Georgia, I'm so glad you finally asked. <laughs> and then, boom, they'll lay it on us. God is not like that. Right. Amen. He says, if you ask of me a uh, fish, I'm, I'm not going to give you a stone. If you ask of me bread, I'm not going to give right. you a servant. Right. And we're so afraid sometimes to ask God for those kind of good things. Oh, we come to him with our grocery list. And as one minister I heard recently, he said, if people didn't have a whole bunch of needs to come to God with, they wouldn't have a prayer life. Right. 
co-mingle, which should be bilingual. And yeah. we go from one, one uh, language to another. God is wanting to baptize you guys in the Holy Ghost. Oh, I, do you already speak in tongues? Well, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm telling you, uh, I, don't, I don't know anything about you, but the Holy Ghost has been on you from the time you walked yes. in this building. Yes. So that tells me it was on you before you even walked in the yes. building. Hallelujah. And he says, he is going to come to you in ways that you have never even imagined. You've wanted it. You've, you've talked. You've prayed about it. You've wished. You've hoped for it. And God is saying, get ready, because it's just about to literally explode all over you. <laughs> you guys want some of that or not? Yeah. 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 Okay, see that, that, that doesn't intimidate me at all. That just shows me everybody is different. Everybody is individual. God sees each one of us in our individuality and he loves it. He doesn't just want you to be part of the herd. I know what everybody else writes. He sometimes wants somebody to stand out. Yes. Jesus certainly did. Yeah. And his disciples too. And you may, some of you may not ever do what, what happens up here on the platform. Well, who cares? Do what you're called to do. Be who you're called to be. Oh, but you and Red. Bands. I don't know what bands means, but whoa, stop. I gotta, I gotta touch you. I'm just a ground. It's okay. Oh, God, my body. Oh, oh, I hope this doesn't embarrass you, but I really could care less. The Lord says to you, you are just a darling to him. You are just, now see if it was a young, a sweet young chick, the young good looking chick saying that to you, that'd be, that'd be all right. <laughs> the Lord is saying he wants to be intimate with you more than even a sweet, young, good-looking chick. He says, because you're a darling to him. He has loved you from the, from the time of your birth. He is so sorry for what, what the enemy has done in your life and the, the, um, the destruction that has happened in your life and to your life. But he says, I have come to redeem and to rebuild and he says, you are just my darling. So get used to that kind of intimacy from him because he's going to talk that way to you from now on. Is that okay with you? Okay. <laughs> 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 you know, I would just take it you, Kim, but I just lied. Can I? She told me, though. Put out a video. What's your name? Alexander. Well, I see down on your shirt it says obey. Do you? <laughs> yeah, thank you for your honesty. Thank you. But the Lord wants to say something personal to you. See, I started getting tears here. I, I'm emotional, but I already get emotional when I'm in, unless the Spirit moves on me. And right now the Spirit is moving on me on your behalf. Because he's saying, uh, Alexander, that he has, you've not only cried tears, but he's cried tears over you. And he has sent forth his angels to protect you because he says, you flat need some protection. <laughs> and he's saying, Alexander, I'm not gonna let you go. It doesn't matter what, you, what, what you've been doing or what you're going to do. He says, I'm not gonna let you go. And he says, as a matter of fact, I'm assigning new angels to you this day. Yes. Wow. Angels that are gonna protect you, that are gonna guide you, that are gonna speak to you. And he says, don't be afraid of my angels. They're the good guys. They're the good guys. Father, I rebuke every foul spirit that has tried to control and possess this man in Jesus' name. I break every hold of the enemy off of his life. And I speak for, for new life to spring forth within him. That deep kind of life, that deep kind of well that just taps in. Taps into that kind of fresh, clear, wonderful water that he's never experienced in his whole life. I pray for a refreshing to come on Alexander that's going to absolutely blow his mind. Hallelujah. Justin, look, he's, he's not 
uh, I love the crust, like on bread. <laughs> My husband and I have a really good, we got a good combination going. Because when I make a cake, uh, I like to get it really dug around the edges, and Bob likes the, the middle, the soft, the gooey stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, we all have different tastes and different things that we want. And, and uh, sometimes I like to just um, consume the crust so I can get to the good stuff, and that's what the Lord is doing in your life. He is consuming more of the crust. Whoa, I break a religious spirit off of you, brother. I, I, you know, I, I hope that doesn't offend you, but well, yeah, I hope it does. <laughs> <laughs> See, a religious spirit is an offending spirit. And it wants to talk you into to, uh, stuff of, of judgment, stuff of things that aren't, aren't really of God. And, uh, and there, there's been a certain amount of hate. I was raised for many years in the church, and I'm telling you, you cannot be in that great length of time without having some kind of a religious spirit. And I had to have a lot of them pray off of me. So don't be offended by that. I just break off some of those that are still lingering, that are still just they're wanting to get in there and just mess with your mind. I see a lot of separation that's happening in your life. You're coming into some new things of the spirit. That means you're going to have to separate yourself even from some of the old stuff, even from some of the good stuff. So I read in somebody's book one time, blew my mind. He said, we're so used to repenting of our sins, but we bring our good things to God. So if we uh, have a certain talent in a certain way, a good thing, like, like Jeremy and, and Holly, they have a talent for music, and it's just, it's very apparent. Amen. And so this, this uh, writer said, and we don't realize that even our good things are just as strained with sin as our sin things. I'm telling you, it was an eye-opener to me, a complete eye-opener, because we didn't think about it. We thought, oh, the good things, well, we'll use those for the kingdom. And Jedediah, that's what the Lord is saying. He doesn't care about any of your good stuff because he wants to give you better. And he says, uh, he says you've been a, a trooper. Oh, well, that's a good term. I don't think I've ever said that to anybody before. You've been a trooper. And that says and a diligent one to, to uh, hang in there, but also it means one of the army, a good troop. Yeah. And, and uh, Greg, was that your name? Oh, good, I remembered you. Uh, notice I kept touching you. I know. I, I, I kept saying every time I touched him, every time I leaned up against him, I'm like, oh Lord, what's this? I'm talking to Jared, Jedediah. I'm like, you're touching this man. <laughs> and, and that's what the Lord is saying to you. He's saying, you've seen me minister to other people over and over and over again. But he says, every time it happened, he says, you didn't realize I was touching your life even more and more. I was coming closer to you. I was getting more and more intimate with you. This is what the Lord is saying. Just get ready because you ain't seen nothing yet. He is just about to blow your mind wide open. And if my daughter was here, she'd say, uh-oh, mom's got her prophetic finger out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the Lord is pointing his prophetic finger at you, and he's saying he has touched you with, with prophetic um, voice. He has touched you with a prophetic understanding, and he says you better step up to the plate because he says it is time because he's coming closer and you want to let his touch be on you as never before. Amen. Jeremy, come down here, please. Uh -oh. <laughs> as my pastor's wife said, when she was introducing me to her congregation, she says, oh, we know, we're just going to, Georgia just come out. She just tells us what to do. And no, 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 Again, I only cry in the spirit when it's the spirit on me. The Lord is saying he's been mixing his, uh, the, his tears with yours for a long, long time. And he says it's a good mixture. Now let me ask you what else he's going for here. See, if you don't get the right thing on Google, you know, or else you don't get the complete answer that you've asked for, you go back and you ask you more questions, right? You type it in and you go for the, all right, we do the same thing in the Holy Ghost. You better start doing this in your private prayer life. So you ask him, hold it in the wash tongue. Oh, no, 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 no. Who's stubborn? 
All right, this is this is to Jeremy personally, but it's also to this whole congregation. The Lord told me recently, he told me the word tedious, and I had to go to the dictionary and look that up. I live with the dictionary, because he's all the time telling me a word that, you know, I mean, yeah, I kind of knew what tedious meant. But nevertheless, you, you look it up in the dictionary, he'll tell you stuff. And he said, the, so many of the prayers of my people are tedious. When I looked it up, I was shocked. And I had to admit, yeah, it fit me part of the time. They're dull. They're boring. They're uninteresting. They're ho hum. They're business as usual. I mean, can you imagine the Trinity trying to listen to some of our prayers and going to sleep? <laughs> Yet, if you really will, will humble yourself and think about it and let him revise your prayer life, your prayer language. I'm not talking about talking in tongues, but if that fits, okay. But it revise your prayer language. Jeremy, the Lord is saying he wants to revise some things that you've been doing wonderfully for a long time. But even the wonderful things sometimes will take revision and, and adjustment and just... Um, drifting over into a new vein, a new path. And that's what the Lord is really doing. Mm. He says, it's going to happen so fast you're going to have to run to keep up. It's It He says, it's not business as usual anymore. This is a demonstration right here. This morning is a demonstration. I have lived prophetic demonstrations all my life. God's had to explain that, what that meant to me even before I knew it was happening. This is a prophetic demonstration that he has busted into your service and busted it wide open and taken you in a different vein than you intended to go, that you knew he was going to go. Nobody knew. Even I had breakfast with Christy this morning, but she didn't know I was coming to your church until we were in the parking lot. And she said, I can go pick up mom. And I said, I'm coming to your church. And, and that's what God is doing a lot of times. So, yeah. When you come to a church service, you had better come with the expectation right. in your heart, right. God's going to show up, yes. God's yes. going to show up, yes. and, and it's going to happen, and intentionally know that instead of most of the time, too many of us, we come with, oh, well, let yeah. the guys on the platform carry the load. Oh, well, they're supposed to be the ones preparing during the week. You better tap in and see what the Spirit's going to do. He might want to use you. Oh, my gosh, you have a bit. He might want to use you. See, he might give you something, even to say to just somebody you sit beside. Not to get up on the microphone. Somebody you park by in the, in the parking lot. You just don't know. Jeremy didn't know I was going to show up. And God said to me one night as I was going to a meeting, he said the word strut. I had to look that up. I found some kid that had it on his, on his iPhone. Didn't even know, you know, there were dictionaries on iPhones. And I had to look it up. And it meant, he said, I'm going to strut in this place tonight. Well, the Lord, you can't get well, You better get ready, Jeremy. He's going to strut in this place. And it's, it's not just all, all uh, songs and music and business as usual. I'm telling you, uh, there's a time... When Smith Wigglesworth said, if the Holy Ghost doesn't move, I move him. And when I read that, I thought, how audacious, how presumptuous. But then I realized who Smith Wigglesworth was, what he did, how he walked, how many people he had raised from the dead, let alone healings. And so when Smith said, if Holy Ghost doesn't move, I move him, I began to believe that. And no, there were times when if he doesn't didn't move on me, if there was a need, if there was a, any kind of little function, I moved him. Jeremy, you better get used to this. You better start tapping in more than just your song. Holly girl, more than just your songs. God loves your music. He loves your songs. But it's got to be more. And there are times when you had better be ready to flat stop it all. And just say, we're not doing another thing until the Holy Ghost tells us what he wants to do. Come on. Come on. And you know what? We're not used to that. We want business as usual. We want to read the bulletin and see what comes next. We better stop reading our religious bulletin. <laughs> stop reading our religious bulletin to see what comes next. And instead of
said, let God show up and show off. Yes. You look up that word when you get home or on your iPhone, whatever, strut. And God said to me, I want to strut in this place tonight because I was speaking at a certain church in San Diego. And it means to throw, to uh, put your chest up, to throw back your head. I forget, uh, I've said it so many times, you'd think I know it by heart, but no, well. Um, and to show off and to, uh, like, to give, we have a saying, strut your stuff. Yeah. Well, he did. He says, I, I want to uh, impress observers. Uh, That's, see, impress observers. Uh, you show them. Holly and Jeremy. He says, I have called you to this place on a special assignment. Woo! Yes. And he Definitely. said, when I called Peter off of the housetop that, that day to eat of something that Peter claimed was, oh, no, Lord, that, uh, I've never done that before. Don't do that. Uh, that's not part of, of my culture. And Peter could have missed it. Peter could have missed it. Holly and Jeremy and whoever God is speaking to, you could miss it if you didn't obey to the uttermost. And Peter had to go beyond his, his comfort zone, beyond everything familiar, beyond everything he had learned from childhood up in his culture. God is taking this place into a different culture. Right? Amen. Amen. And we better step into it. And so Peter, I um, mean, he took a few dudes with him because, hey, you know, hey, they're scared. And God's always, oh, yeah, he's so good. He's so good. He says, if you're scared, I'll give you somebody alongside. Yeah. It's okay. He might get a little ticked off about it, like he did with Moses when Moses said, I can't speak, I can't speak. And God said, okay, you know, shut up, I'll give you Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> See, God, God will, he'll make concessions for us sometimes. Yeah. Holly and Jeremy, and God is calling you to a new culture. And he's calling you to yes. step out with such yes. courage of obedience as Peter had to do when he went into the house of a Gentile that was forbidden by his culture. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, God is going to take you, oh my, oh my. Every once in a while I think again, I get these manifestations. I wish I didn't, but oh. he says he's going to take you into cultures um, uh, that are forbidden into places that are forbidden, into places that a lot of people would never, ever want to go. And he says, and you won't always get to go in with your music because you're hidden behind your music at times. Oh God, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sad to say this, I love these people so much. He says, stop hiding behind your music. There are times you better stop your music and start your speaking out by the Holy Ghost. He says, because he is gonna call both of you to do at times what I'm doing this morning. And let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, come on. Oh, God, God. I'm telling you, if we don't follow the Holy Spirit, you might as well pack it up and go home. Yes. Right. Don't, don't get dressed and do makeup and whatever you got to do. I don't know what you do. <laughs> go to home for trouble. To get up. Stay home. Stay home in bed. Uh, but come to church ready, ready, expecting. I went home from service one time in San Diego years ago, and I said, oh, God, what is wrong with me? I go to this church, and I leave, and I'm grieved in my spirit, and I don't know, what is wrong with me? Some of my peers leave this place, and they say to me, oh, God showed up. Wasn't that great this morning? Isn't that wonderful? And I'm grieved. What is wrong with me? And here's what the Lord said to me. George, he said, you always expect me to show up. Every time, whether it's in your prayer life or in a church service or in a group meeting or a, a Bible study or what, he said, you always come expecting me to show up. He says, that's the difference. Many of them come to church not expecting anything. And so they don't leave dissatisfied. You need to come with your expector turned up on high. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Recalibrate it and get up on high. Intentionally come to this place to have the Holy Ghost fall all over you. Amen. Well, I guess that's it. <laughs> yeah. I want to say something over everybody. Um, Paul's 
told Timothy to remember the things spoken over you. So I want you to write them down, first of all. What's wonderful is this is live recorded, so you can go back and watch it in case you forget what was spoken over you. But it's very important. A few years ago, God told me to remember everything. He took me clear back to my birth, and I started writing it out, all out, and it's so powerful. Because then you see all the things connected, and uh, it is so powerful you know, to do and, that. And adding to that, mm -hmm. the prophetic voice of God uh, creates. Yes. And so he may have spoken to something over any of you that is yet to come. But the words have created something and brought it legally into this atmosphere to become what God has ordained it to be. And God is one who calls forth the things that are not, and so they are. Amen. That's why he can say something over you just as if you're already in it and you haven't even stepped into it yet. But it's creative. So if when you cooperate with it and do what Dave is saying, yeah. it's, it just expands it and lets God come into it. Amen. So I want to. So I do implore all of you who did receive a word. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily have to mean that George has said the word. Because we're all in this place and we've all been hearing the voice of the Lord. And so if God spoke something to you today, you need to write it down. And and like uh, we're live on Facebook, so you can go to our Facebook page and you can re listen to it and, and identify what God, what are you saying? And for those of you that maybe you were wishing or asking or wanting to receive a word from God. I want you to know that you don't have to receive a word from Georgia or me or somebody else because your ears have been tuned or can be tuned to the voice of God where you need to hear from him, yeah. from his mouth to yeah. your ears. Yeah. And that's ultimately the goal in all of our life. Every single one of us in here, we want to learn how to hear God's voice. We want to learn how to tune our ears to listen to him, to obey his voice, yeah. and to get the authentic word of God. I, I think I said it last week that uh, a friend of mine uh, who has a, uh, his name is Steve Backlund, he says, if once you've received a word from the Lord, there's really nothing stopping you. There's really nothing. Once you have that word from God, there's a power that rises up to see that word come about, to see that thing happen in our life. So, Georgia, thank you for stepping out. Thank you for honoring the house here today. And, and I, I am learning how to get out of the way <laughs> sometimes when I need to, when I need to step aside so that God can do what he wants to do. And, and so I want to just encourage all of us. I, the thing I was going to talk about today with Jacob, and we'll, you'll have to just wait for it next week, so, um, <laughs> is, is, is how we've been talking about purpose, and a huge amount, or the emphasis of our purpose, related to what's going on in the heavens, and what God is speaking, they, they can't be apart from each other. In other words, your purpose is going to be hand in hand with what heaven is doing and what heaven is speaking. You guys hear me today? So, say that again. Your purpose, your design, everything that God intends to do in you and through you is in holding hands, in direct, it cannot be separate from what God is doing and speaking mm -hmm. from the kingdom, from the heavenly perspective. In other words, you will not find your purpose outside of what God says. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I just wanted, we'll share about Jake next week. And so, uh, this was a cool day. This was a cool time. Yeah. This was fun. Yes. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, uh, for interrupting things for us. So, we're going to stand right now and bless each other as we go out today. So stretch out your hands. I encourage you to put your hands on your neighbor's shoulders. Just whoever's next to you, just let's just bless each other, lay hands on each other today. And let's speak the blessing together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile down on you and show you his kindness. May the Lord answer your prayers and give you his peace. May the Lord cover you with his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Have a blessed day. Oops.
Excuse me.